Over the last few weeks, Rogue Planet Games have been teasing us with news about the upcoming construction system overhaul that is coming to Planet Side 2. Well, today, the patch notes for the first iteration of that update have just gone live, and you'll be able to get your hands on the update yourself this weekend. G'day there once again viewers, your mate Kamikaze78 here, and today we're taking a deep dive into Planet Side's next big game update. So to make things abundantly clear folks, no, the content that we're talking about in this video is not on the live server yet. It will be deploying to the public test server on April 28th and I've left a download link in the description down below if you want to check it out. And there will be a couple of key one hour playtesting sessions for the community to give the content a go in a stress test combat environment. Those times are listed on your screen currently. Now normally I would wait until I've had a chance to play with the new content and the new update myself before making a video about about it, but I'll be in Melbourne this weekend attending DreamHack, so unfortunately I'm gonna miss these playtests. If you're also attending and you happen to see me around, be sure to come say good day. it'd be great to meet you guys. But anyway, despite missing the playtests, I did want to get some preliminary thoughts out about what this update holds for us, so let's get into things. So firstly, I've got to say there's a lot to go through here. The scope of this update extends to the way in which construction operates, the content around construction, and the quality of life of the construction system. Some of which actually may be relevant to the rest of the game, but more on that shortly. Probably the biggest ticket item here are the additions and the removals in pieces that are available to you when constructing a base. And there's a lot of additions here. We have the command center, a large structure that houses ground and air vehicle pads, as well as a secure spawn room and an equipment terminal. We've also got the recon array, which alerts the owner of the array to the presence of nearby enemies and attackers, similar to the alarm module, but also passive checks for enemies nearby, similar to that of a recon detect device found on the infiltrator class. The recon array can be activated manually to provide detailed motion sensing for a short duration. The bulwark walls, which are heavy walls that are built high up to hide structures behind them. We've got the module dispenser, which is a module only dispensary for placing close to the areas in which you need it. There's an infantry tunnel, which is a covered tunnel for safe infantry passage. An infantry tree stand, which is a compact tall sniping perch for surveying the base Below. We have an infantry awning coming, which is a covered overhang to hold back fire from enemy aircraft. A secure silo, which is additional to the regular Quartium silo that's still in the game, that you can lock for the use of you and your squad mates only. A rebirthing center, which is a shielded spawn point with a built-in equipment terminal. And a vehicle bridge, which is a large-scale bridge that can bridge small gaps in rough terrain or between hills. It's actually wide enough for a Colossus to cross over, which should really give you a sense of scale as to how big this bridge asset is going to be. Overall, the scale of some of the structures that are coming in this update is really unmatched when you compare it against some of the other construction objects that we've become used to using over the years with the system as it currently stands. The command center in particular is an absolute beast of a thing, and I'm kind of hoping it'll even go as far as to welcome interesting infantry fights inside the command center itself. But that is some pretty wishful thinking, I will admit, that sort of relies on the system playing out in a very certain way. I must admit, I was kind of hoping to see more large-scale buildings, if you will, that encouraged more, you know, tight-knit, close-quarters fightings in interiors, but unfortunately my wishes will not be granted in this update, but anyway, could be worse. The bulwark walls in particular are also likely to see construction systems become a little bit more resilient to vehicles being able to shell the internals of a base when a smidge of elevation is available nearby, and the different infantry cover pieces that builders are now going to have access to, I think may go a long way in making infantry less vulnerable to just obscene amounts of spam when playing around a construction base. I will admit the vehicle bridge is an addition that I didn't necessarily see coming when we first had the construction system announced, and when I think to the amount of areas in where in which this bridge could be realistically useful in game, I can't exactly think of too many at all, but I'm also keen to see the creative individuals behind the construction system prove me just absolutely wrong there, so do your best guys. Overall, it's good to see some new pieces coming to the construction system, giving builders new ways to flex their, I guess you could call creative muscles, right? Flex their Minecraft brains in planet side, considering that's the thing that we're going for now. But I think some of the more important changes coming to the construction system actually lie with 
the removals to the construction system, or the reworks to the system, if you will. As someone who interacts with the construction system more as an attacker or a defender, as opposed to actually building the bases, the removal of the AI turret modules, ergo automated turrets, and the one-way shields from the majority of construction pieces here are the adjustments that I'm actually most looking forward to seeing with the system. We've already spoken about this particular detail in length in previous videos about the construction system, but just to reiterate for a moment here, I'm sorry construction mains, but if your base surviving is entirely dependent on the presence of automated defenses that disallow any meaningful or enjoyable PvP action in the base that you've built, then the system will never be enjoyable for players other than yourself and ergo the construction system will always remain to be a shell of what it could offer the game. A base's survivability should really be dependent on the presence of teammates to be successful and it shouldn't really be balanced around the ability for a solo player to be successful in building a base and defending it on their own. I'm sorry, that's just not how the system should be built. When done right, construction can completely change the flow of a map and become a bastion of defense. That degree of impact should require teamwork to do successfully. You want your base to be defended while it's being built? Get some teammates to help you out. It's as simple as that. If it's so boring to defend a base that's not yet constructed, imagine how it feels attacking one riddled with automated defenses. And on top of that, you'll have defenders actually there shooting at you as well. Yeah, exactly. It's not a fun dynamic. If you want to build a player-made base, cool, but expect to be attacked and expect to need to defend it with teammates alongside you. If you haven't got any outfit made on to help you build a base in, say, the wee hours of the morning when you're playing, well, sorry, maybe you need to do something different for a little while. Anyways, this removal of the passiveness from the overall construction system tends to drive a little deeper into some of the other reworks as well, mainly to the way in which modules are going to work going forward. Modules are now socketed into slots that exist on larger scale construction items and they provide buffs accordingly, similar to how modules do right now, except modules are now less of an AOE benefit and are more a deliberate upgrade to key structures that you wish to upgrade. The standard modules that will be available to defenders are as per follows. You've got the repair module, which repairs the building over time and increases the maximum health by 5,000. The projectile shield module, which provides the structure with shielded windows and doors and increases the max health by 2,000. These shields are now also two-way shields as opposed to one-way shields, so defenders can't fire out of them. The skywall shield module is also coming back to individual structures, this time providing the structure with a skywall shield that protects from airborne attacks and no longer EMPs infantry when they pass through it. This particular shield is a one-way shield, which means that aircraft are still going to be susceptible to, say, AA Max suits underneath it. There's a firewall module coming, which prevents non-firewall modules in this structure from being hacked and overloaded, which increases the maximum health by 5,000 also. There's an equipment module terminal coming, which provides the structure with an unhackable equipment terminal. There's a durability module coming, which doesn't provide any shielding or passive repairs, but it increases the maximum health by 8,000. There's also a capacity module coming, which increases the maximum quartium held by this object by 5,000, and that will remain active until destroyed or replaced. Now, based on my read of the patch notes, these modules will not be on a timer and will not require people to actively refill them with quartium, no. Instead, there will now be a couple of high-pressure modules, which provide an even more impactful buff to a base module for a brief moment in time. Those are the heavy repair module, which repairs the building rapidly over time and increases max health pool by 5,000. That remains active for up to one minute. There's the fortress shield module, which provides a projectile bubble shield around the structure and surrounding area. This shield is two-way and will remain active for one minute. There's also a heat dispersion module, and I believe this will go on turrets exclusively, which drastically reduces the heat accumulation for the weapon while being operated by a player, and increases the maximum health pool of the turret by 2,000 as well. That will also remain active for one minute. Attackers will be able to overload all of these modules, similar to how they would a generator or an SCU in a base to destroy it, and can also place quartium bombs and tunnel worms into vacant module slots or sockets on enemy player bases. These quartium bombs and tunnel worms will be available to players in the tactical slot of a loadout. When those items are detonated, they'll either deal heavy amounts of damage to the structure itself, 
or prevent a structure from being able to be repaired at all. It almost feels like we're taking sort of a, a Rush-esque approach to the gameplay with the construction basis here, and truth be told, I'm kind of all for it. I love Rush game modes in most shooters I play, so to see Planet Side sort of take on board a bit of a, you know, an approach or a take on this game mode sort of style kind of makes me a little bit excited here. I'm genuinely interested to see if the community is up to the task, though, of using the construction system to create spaces that actually encourage fun fighting that revolves around this gameplay style. We'll see what happens. Now, of course, none of this matters if the construction system isn't going to be you know, really relevant and usable within the core flow of the gameplay and the map of Planet Side 2. That's when these new construction outposts come into play. As we've previously mentioned on the channel, open field vehicle capture bases are being converted into construction outposts which will now have permanent construction silos on them. These silos will passively fill with quartium and are available to the entire faction who owns the base to use as they need to. This essentially is an attempt to put the new mechanics and the game play that construction is going to try and encourage in the forefront of the experience at certain points on a continent, at least to a certain extent. Definitely happy with these new spaces getting more uses out of them because, let's be real, open field vehicle capture bases have been a little shallow in gameplay as of late, and it will make for a good opportunity to crash test the new mechanics and ensure that there is always an ample supply of quartium available to at least get some form of a base up and running. There's also a ton of polish coming to the construction system when it comes to actually building and maintaining a base especially with the controls of, you know, putting pieces down. I'm not going to go down the list of all of them here, mainly because the patch notes are in the description for your reading pleasure if you want to get into all those nitty and gritty details. And, well, also because I haven't got exactly the best frame of reference for what needed improving on the whole controls element of construction. I'll leave that to the quote-unquote construction Andes in the community and in the comment section down below to give us the best insight as to how good these changes are, or how bad they are, for all I know. But there was one particular quality of life improvement that did catch my eye here, though. That being the new favorites function that allows you to mark and prioritize your favorite construction pieces in their respective menus. Please oh please let this get into the game across the board. Weapons, implants, the works, this kind of functionality would be great for every other aspect of the game. Please RPG, this is such a minor quality of life improvement in the grand scheme of things, but god I can only imagine how much time I would save, you know, switching out my implants and my weapons from time to time. It would be great to see. One other major change that is yet to be finalized but is still coming is changing the flail, orbital strike and glaive IPC's targeting device to be a laze system as opposed to a fire and forget dart system, which is a great step in the right direction if I'm being honest here. It creates a sense of counterplay to the whole artillery system that we have in the game at the moment and actually leaves operators of these long range weaponry at least vulnerable for a little bit moment while they laser target if you will. OSHA is also going to be getting some significant revamps top to bottom, including probably the biggest change coming to Mirror Bay Watchtower. I'm not going to actually go down the significant list of these changes here because again, I feel like they're a little contextless without actually getting in and trying out the update myself. So I will leave you guys to check out the PTS this weekend and see what these OSHA changes are like. But folks, that is going to be it for me today. That is a quick summary of everything in the public test server update that is coming on the 28th of April or the end of this week. If you guys enjoyed today's video, Video, be sure to backhand the like button as it does go a long way to supporting the channel and getting the channel out to new viewers and if you are a new viewer and you're new here hit that subscribe button guys as it keeps you up to date with all future content that we release here on the channel and as always i recommend you guys check out my social media links when you can we are currently running a couple of test streams over on twitch again i know changing platforms potentially once again i get it but we're doing it so check us out on twitch once again guys chuck the channel a follow Stay up to date wherever you can. Once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care, guys. Have a good one.